are so many information for examination purpose is things are going to be a little bit detail you might not be required to remember but there will be some of them which are going to be really 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 important those things you need to you need to write okay those things you need to write so that you'll be able to remember properly you'll be able to uh, you know revise also it will help you in the revision all right so i'm going to show you the pdf and uh, let's see how it goes right um this is the course book created by it's not a actually book but uh, it's actually a presentation created by architect kevin spina basically you will understand this whole thing like we understood about the indian one according to the timeline this uh, presentation also is according to the timeline we are going to understand a little bit about a prehistoric and some important things which figuratively you will need to remember and after that we'll talk about ancient civilizations where we'll discuss egyptian ottomans greek roman these will be four and after that we are going to enter towards classic period where it will be early christians a uh, little bit part of the groom uh, uh, greeks also i think greek this this whole part is going to be the classic ancient between is merging towards the classic byzantine till there and dominas can after that we are going to enter medieval period where romanas gothic renaissance all these things will do and after that neo classicism will do in between and the modern so whole timeline is like that do you want to written the timeline according to the period wise you can you can write it like that prehistoric that's a separate period prehistoric after that ancient civilizations there you will have egyptian ottomans uh, babylon and mesopotamia indus valley chinese then comes a uh, next period classic period there you will find greek roman early christians now from classic we are going towards medieval period there it starts this very early medieval period you will find byzantine romanesque byzantine romanesque gothic and late medieval period that is gothic is like the central of medieval period late medieval period will be renaissance and after that comes neo classicism after medieval period comes neo classicism period there you will find uh, baroque rococo and uh, neo classical style typical neo classical style and after neo classicism you have modern period from uh, mid 19th century to whatever we are experiencing till whole uh, 20th century and after 20th century what we have 21st century that is called post modern so we don't have to look up to 20th post modern one not so much i didn't think so it might happen but let's see how it goes okay prehistoric in prehistoric couple of important uh monolithic architectural pieces you will see first it starts with the caves so the way the prehistoric people used to live 
just have a look don't have to remember don't put pressure on your head about these ones okay here this one is going to be really important the cave paintings from africa france spain might be a little bit important okay so you just mentioned that the date used to trace back around 35000 years bce before christ 35000 years africa france and spain cave paintings right in prehistoric stonehenge is uh, one of the really famous dated back around uh, 2800 bce no one knows actually exact exact date is not able to uh, calculate it but generally it considered to be very very old stonehenge in england just remember these okay now this thing is going to inspire future constructions of uh, palaces and uh, other type of building especially in the greek so this is really important by the way all right so just remember that the photograph of stonehenge and do write that while you will go through this pdf you will remember which one to look at and the information you will be able to extract faster right near east near east uh, is the area where we say now the gulf area usually dominated by uh, mesopotamian empire mesopotamia and babylon and later it became persia and after that uh, ottoman empire so basically the area of egypt and uh, all those gulf countries including iran and uh, turkey and all this area was part of that during this period now this artifact what you see with a lion body and head of the king and uh, eagle's wing that was the ideal representation of a god and people used to uh, consider kings as a god they were form of a god itself they used to recognize like that humans only but they used to possess certain uh, power which used to make them feel like that so the name for that thing is colossal you just remember that colossal winged bull guarding chief portal right so this is sometimes is the bull some sometime with a, a, a lion body also you will see these kind of things okay now this is from just remember is from mesopotamia okay after that uh, there was some concept of palaces especially ziggurats you just remember this type of design building this is called ziggurat around 2000 bce so just remember that architecture of ziggurats these used to be a uh, part of a temple the whole thing a temple there is a, on, on top uh, top most area there is a temple for the deity so ziggurats is one of the magnificent efficient uh, architectural development of that time right now next is going to come the egyptian civilization egyptian civilization around the nile river giza to nubia and there are in between there are a couple of uh, big cities used to be uh, settled up so um primarily think the egyptians they were around like you know desert kind of country but uh, uh, they were very rich because of uh, the richness of nile and uh, around the and the the uh, all the area the field around nile used to be hugely fertile it used to have they used to have quite a huge business impact in all over area so now the kind of society they have developed pharaoh used to be the highest position and uh, uh, just like a uh, colossals pharaohs who used to hold the similar kind of power in the society and uh, they used to create this kind of uh, very couple of thing you need to write in egyptian uh, their 
um, script hieroglyph h y r o g l i p h hieroglyph script is completely made with symbolism it's all symbolic designs uh conveyed and uh, used as a literal you know basically a language a written text a script so that hieroglyph is one important development from there giza pyramid giza pyramid Sphinx, S P I, S P H I, N X, Sphinx. Now the architect who designed all these things, or you know, big part, there are like huge uh, team of architects. But one of the main one was I'm Hontep, I M H O N T E P. It was his his idea to design such kind of magnificent. Uh, uh, triangular buildings we know as a pyramids okay so you can see this is the okay this is this is what you see with lion body and the head of a human this is called a sphinx now sometime with a goat also depending on the requirement of this thing sometime goat sometime uh, some different different animal uh, according to their iconography they used to use this kind of uh, figurative representations right so these are imhotep i m h o t e p imhotep designed by imhotep so here it's written also right so pyramid of giza you just remember that and sphinx they will be fine and rest are not so much memorable so you can skip all these informations okay this is fine right okay now moving towards after the greeks of course we are not looking towards chinese we don't have so much informations as well as uh, you are not going to get any kind of questions also from chinese from the beginning of time they are like very secretive so greeks with the greeks we are entering towards a uh, classic period and that it is back to around 1500 bce to 300 bce during that period there has been lot lots of big development in architecture especially because greeks were quite a brilliant uh mathematician engineers sculptors they were brilliant and they used to understand uh you know the universal structure pretty good and all these people all these people you heard of socrates and uh, aristotle and there are so many other uh, pythagoras all those all those big mathematicians also they live they live quite a big uh, mark on their uh, these engineering and architectural developments so one of the primary development of architecture from that period from the greeks you will find out in the greek temples uh they called uh, parthenon i think is written or not here but you just write that greek temples parthenon p a r t h e n o n parthenon parthenon temple are these okay this kind of representation you will see of temples why why it's not written here this they should write this thing parthenon Right. you don't have to study all these important details of architecture i don't think so it will be required so much and uh, but you you can you can give it a read you can give it a read you can draw also a little bit it might become part of uh, architectural vocabulary because so many things what you what you find in modern 
architectural development they were inspired from all these things primarily from greeks so this might include arise and billet coves uh covet all these things might the braces especially this kind of are some some of them are for me also i'm not an architecture student by the way i haven't been but for me also while we were studying these uh, culture these names feels like it's uh you know these are famous thing because i have heard of these things so you may look forward to these things just for a sake of knowledge a little bit because these buildings were very futuristic and they have inspired the futuristic development as well right and uh, from this parthenon uh, temple structure couple of these pillars they were really famous so in that you find uh, doric doric one is a very simple style of uh, pillar that's called doric second is ionic where you will find out that the pillar is getting little bit embellishment done it's not very simple is it's not very exaggerated also and uh, ornamented but it's there is some design element has done on top of that that is called this type of pillars called uh, uh doric uh, sorry uh, ionic doric is the most simple one just round structure no embellishment nothing now there is a there is one type of pillar which is highly embellishment you know ornament ornamentation has been done on top of that with carving this is a carved out uh, stones big stones but very ornamented way that's called uh, corinthian corinthian yeah here is in corinthian corinthian yes so that's the three types of uh, uh, different different embellishment you will see on the pillars from greeks just remember that okay now all these temples which used to be designed like the temple of hera this these are the basically greek uh, you know the greek civilization gods and goddesses the parthenon temple or temple of nike actors actors artemis temple so all these things they have all those uh, design details okay so this will be enough i think for right yeah okay this is fine all right next is going to be roman and romans also used to be roman and greeks and they are very very close to each other by the way look at that when there will and the greeks they have inspired the roman civilization on a on a very large scale in fact their gods and goddesses also used to be kind of greeks only just they used to have different names but they used to be the same gods and goddesses so their temple architecture and everything also you'll find it's like kind of similar thing you can see that you can actually see that right this is a similar like uh, corinthian what you saw in the last one this is similar like doric what you saw in the first one simple one right they might be having some different name by the way here yeah okay so the similar kind of thing you'll find one big thing from roman you will see is the roman colosseum that was one of the big development in architecture there and is still there um uh, it comes under now seven wonders of the world what in the last one which was selected seven wonders of world the roman colosseum also is there right uh, mosaic art couple of things they developed newly the romans and the temples looks almost same only so yes like the greek ones now this one is the roman colosseum which used to be a back then the largest theater in the world is still right now there is no theater which is as large as as uh, colosseum all right so now this this is called the classic period early christians don't have to pay so much attention on these it's okay not so much important st peter's rome that's fine what is going to be important after this thing is byzantine byzantine was one of the ground breaking development in architecture and you will see one of the magnificent design remember this mosaic art it was developed during roman period 
it was taking shape of big art during Byzantine period. So all you need to see, one thing you need to uh, uh, understand that every period which is coming, the previous one, it always influenced the next one. You'll find some kind of similarities, but on a very larger and very experimental uh, way that the next period will be having its own mark as well. So Byzantine, what kind of thing is, you'll expect from Byzantine? The introduction of domes. That was the, one of the biggest development from Byzantine, which uh, the influence of dome structures and those kind of designs you find till the modern age as well. Centralized plan, Basilica plan, early Christians, domed and centralized, central, uh, centralized plan, that was the plan of Byzantine. Centralized means the main deity. And one thing you need to remember about these things, whatever you're studying, this kind of big architecture development used to happen only for uh, you know religious purposes or maximum for religious purposes, like 99%, you may say like that. So all these things, what you're saying is what you were able to see here. These are not for someone's personal property or something. The whole state used to invest themselves, their skills and everything to create these things. Now, one of the biggest example of Byzantine, you see Hagia Sophia in uh, Istanbul. Uh, Hagia Sophia was constructed as church initially, but later on Ottoman Empire took a big leap on the, uh, near uh, the Turkish area. They, uh, you know, took those things, they got into influence of uh, Islamic thing and they converted the whole, whole uh, st uh, the building into a mosque. And later on, what happened that uh, they found out they, you know, some uh, order involved, it came like that, Catholic churches also fo fought for that. The whole thing was converted into uh, a museum, Hagia Sophia. Remember this one, this was very much in limelight last year because uh, Ardwan, uh, Mohammed Ardwan is, Mohammed Ardwan, some, some kind of Ardwan, Ardwan is his, uh, his main name, uh, president of Turkey. He converted again that uh, museum into a mosque. So of course it's, the area is dominated by, uh, by them. So they are like, you know, converting them into, uh, anyway, but that, that doesn't matter. The most important thing is that the magnificent structure of this centralized plan of Hagia Sophia, which become really important back then and still is important till this date as well. So that was a Byzantine style creation of dome. After the Byzantine, you will see Romanas. Romanas, there, uh, the church, cathedrals, they started coming in light and they started creating a basilica plan for the cathedrals. You'll find out a round structure for these arches. That was the one of primary development during Byzantine period. Sorry, Romanas period. Romanas, we are talking about the Romanas. Okay, so this kind of structure, whenever you find in any building, just get it right away. It's belong. It belongs to Romanas period. Okay. Then Pisa Cathedral. You see all the arches on the windows, from the entry gate and everywhere. It's arc. Okay. It's done in arc way. Now this arc thing. The Christianity use started growing a lot and they started creating larger, larger building slowly, slowly. The idea of creating a large structure converted the arc kind of structure of uh, the entrance gate and all the arches into a pointed structure. Okay, so the arc is, uh, the arches instead of being uh, circular, curvy, it started becoming 
into pointy uh, structure and that gave birth to gothic period so next what you see in gothic period till here we understood about this uh, till the romanas part after that medieval you know the this is the central of medieval period gothic in gothic it's not only architecture but slowly slowly art started coming out of architecture and started having its own uh, uh you know basically they started creating their own space for the artists uh, artistic expression paintings and other other form of artistic expression as well and what we are talking about the arch is now you can see this pointy arch which is going curved but there on the top this is little bit pointy is angular that was the that, that was the achievement of uh, gothic and with the help of that because the physics works like this i send you a couple of videos about this one how this works basically physics so works like that that they started creating a very huge very large height for these uh, uh, these cathedrals and creating large large height was the idea to influence people to create a very idealistic image for a god and uh, people who will come around they will you know uh, they will get influenced uh, easily about that you, can you see this the one this is structured here now these are the uh, you know the demons everywhere on the churches you will find out is decorated with demons someone who is coming from outside they will see the demons and they will get afraid this is like <laughs> perfect business plan no perfect business plan but anyway will not comment about uh, their authenticity on the authenticity and uh, credibility or something but basically if you're going there if you're watching so many demons you will get an influence that you know just enter the premises of the cathedral and uh, go uh, seek shelter un under god and under under jesus basically the son of god so that was the whole whole structure and this is how they used to plan these things okay so these are very very huge height very huge height one of the primary uh, building from that you see notre dame paris that's one of the uh, most recognizable architectural piece from gothic period notre dame paris remember that one right big big castle that was also plan of gothic period only creating big huge castles right cathedrals castles and all this stuff okay so all right that's gothic now after the gothic one of the big development is going to happen which is going to change the whole world primarily starting from europe but the impact is going to be everywhere so the kind of power the church is used to hold in the society it started becoming questionable and during the period of uh, uh, renaissance which came after gothic that was considered to be the period of rebirth renaissance you need to write that this one here renaissance remember this one really important the renaissance means rebirth the era of humanization the era of seeking knowledge not just believing in things and representing their ideas of uh, uh, okay so renaissance is starting from here now this era of rebirth was about explorations of social development not rather than just idealizing a uh, god or something there were uh, iconographic paintings representations done by so many great artists during the renaissance period but it was much more of a humanistic approach people started studying like you know the leonardo da vinci michelangelo and all these great uh, architects and artists they started uh, understanding the human humanism you know they started taking the humanization 
approach to understand the human life better to make it much more scientific to make it much more relevant and uh, understanding the social structure and understanding the conspiracy theories to debunk them and guide you know the basically artist the job of artist happens to be you know they used to get inspired from the society and they used to create their artwork to influence the influence the society in a better direction that was a kind of power artists also used to hold and still they hold these day also we call it graphic designers primarily these days not many art pieces what we see but right now whatever you see the although uh, they, according to the requirement of business uh, the artist of uh, new age as we had the artists of old days similarly they do uh, manipulate people with their visual skills and uh, they sell their products it used to happen back then also but the basic idea behind that that if we have such kind of power such kind of influencing power we should be working for good side and so many during renaissance period renaissance period they did work on a good thing so renaissance period the development in uh, st peter's basilica what you see is one of the biggest develop architectural development from that period the architects there are so many uh, you know numbers of architects were there primarily the dome which you see the dome structure designed by michael angelo and there were these many architects you know abramantes rafael they are some uh, famous one right uh, you don't have to remember all of them but yeah rafael you may remember that one you remember bernini was really important for their interior all these uh, uh sculpture what you see inside the st peter's basilica is done by bernini's uh you remember mark michelangelo is going to be really important the whole dome structure is done by michelangelo of this st saint peter's basilica in vatican city okay right so you remember that one and uh, some important uh, sculptures will be nice if you remember them especially the sculptures done by michael angelo and bernini rafael used to do a lot of painting by the way and uh, michael angelo also used to do a lot of paintings inside the uh, the dome inside the church uh, the cathedral st peter's basilica there is a big painting painted on the ceiling it's done by michael angelo it's a very famous painting by the way uh the creation of adam you may write that because sometime you never know that that kind of thing might come right so that's renaissance after the renaissance period you will find out rococo baroque uh, bar so first came baroque which was very much embellished kind of structure you see in the baroque period okay we are coming here so here it the baroque period was okay for one thing the baroque and rococo was primarily focused on interior interior designing not like a uh, architectural big architectural development but they were primarily for interior designing so um, the very embellished beautiful exaggerated embellishments gold was gold silver you know, metallic kind of uh, uh, colors used to be a big thing in baroque and rococo style and baroque and rococo was not primarily done for religious purposes or the iconography or something it was possessed by those style possessed by some uh, you know the private owners they used to own those things now you will uh, you need to understand this part that how this uh, the whole religious kind of development converted into privatization of things how people started people started getting a uh, lot of uh, wealth and power in the society not just the state it happened because of uh, uh, industrial revolution and the starting period of industrial revolution was the renaissance itself right during uh, our 16th century that was the period uh, the mid renaissance was around around that time or maybe the late renaissance which started given in 1600 only in india also east india company was started in 1600 
so before before that only you know in 60, early early 16th century the industrial revolution started taking shape and the you know the private players started gaining lot of control and power the one who used to have business so that's how it took shape and uh, baroque and rococo you got to see this thing baroque and rococo thing how beautiful that looks it looks beautiful it looks a little bit exaggerated also you know so not necessarily that it will look beautiful only because it is little sometimes it's too much rococo baroque was still little bit you know in control but rococo came like my god okay can you see these these designs highly embellished this is baroque feels like rococo Now, this is the development of baroque rococo you will see everything is gold r o c o q o rococo this a look at that my god so much so much gold now this is the style is primarily done on interior not just architecture thing architecture is basic only but heavily heavily embellished heavily embellished might not prefer you know modern days people of course and to do this kind of thing you need a lot of money for that it's not easy to get this done but this is like magnificent design man look at that wow color combination and everything is like uh, too much rich so let's focus on our garibi uh anyway rococo after that uh, uh, baroque and rococo industrial revolution opened it started like uh, uh, people can do anything they were so excited oh so many technologies being developed they can do anything but later on it took shape because of the industrial revolution so many good things also happened the death rate went uh, down pretty fast because of development in uh, health sector uh, the ease of uh, transportation the ease of doing business and so many development happened that started creating a little bit easy easy thing easy approach in human life people have started growing their population started growing rapidly and slowly slowly it took a shape of a different approach which was drive by the needs and there is one very famous uh quote from a great architect i don't remember the name but you you can write that quote which is which was given during uh, the ending of neo classicism we'll discuss neo classicism a little bit here i think it's is it there it's not there i think it's there only the 18th 19th century what you are what you are looking at this is the neo classicism period so um the quote was the um, okay the form follows function and that was the birth of modern period where the embellishment became secondary issue and primarily it was all about fulfilling the need a basic you know first experiential based things not heavily embellished but it has to be functional more and after that the form will develop according to little bit requirement here and there so the idea was to form follows function not function follows form first is requirement is the function and after that the form will be created accordingly so the first idea of that thing what you find uh after this first let's talk about the some couple of uh, big uh, buildings development during uh, neo classicism period neo classicism just write that neo classicism in the usa you see by the white the white house that is one of the biggest example of neo classical building the white house the white house after that you see in england uh the birmingham palace in india also because india was under british and victorian architecture is uh, is also is you know the, the part of primary part of neo classicism we victorian architecture which influenced the victoria memorial in kolkata raisina hills what you see the president house in delhi india gate uh, your uh, parliament uh, building you know, the gateway of india in mumbai uh, 
Mumbai CST, railway station, all these things are a part of neoclassical structure, neoclassical design. Okay, so just write that. Victorian, early Victorian, high Victorian and blah, blah, all this stuff. Right, now the form follow function. Then came the form follow function and that gave birth to modern architecture. And the first modern architecture, this one is considered to be first modern architecture, by the way. Uh, Amhas. Richard Turner. Okay, this guy. I think this guy only, only said this thing form for a function. Richard Turner. Right, so this is the first design which was done by previously, it, it used to be to do the pillars and all this stuff. There was use of uh, stones and uh, bricks used to be in use. Industrial evolution, when we started getting iron on a very large quantity because of the mining and all, these structures started taking shape with primarily the structure done with iron and on top of that covered with a plastic material, glass material, and so many other things, other artificial materials. The Crystal Palace, London, is considered to be one of the biggest, uh, okay, so one of the most remarkable building in 19th century. This was done for a uh, exhibition in 19, uh, in 1851. Okay, so Crystal Palace, remember that and please look at the some good photographs of the Crystal Palace. Right, uh, later on, one big development, what you see, uh, it's done in a modern period, by the way, but the influence is from Gothic period. I think this is the one. No, this is not the one. There's a building designed by um, Sagrada Familia. Sagrada Familia designed by, what's his name? And Sagrada Familia. That's one of the greatest architect, architect of the whole, all time. Oh, I'm forgetting his name. Anthony Gaudi, yes. Anthony Gaudi, Sagrada Familia, in Barcelona, Spain. Sagrada Familia. Now this structure is inspired from a Gothic, by the way, but done in a modern period. Uh, inspired by Gothic, not like Gothic, inspired by Gothic. But his development, Anthony Gaudi's development was completely based on complex mathematics and geometry, especially. Right? It's just that couple of arches you find is looks like a little bit pointy, which feels like a Gothic architecture, but uh, it was just inspiration. Right now, this building was started getting into construction around 1924. And after that, sorry, uh, when it was started? Early 19. Yeah, uh, okay, 1882. And it was 70% uh, of this building was completed till 1924 when Anthony Gotti died. Right, Anthony Gotti. So Anthony Gotti, when he died, uh, 26, okay. So in 1926, Anthony Gotti died. And after that, 30% building was left. That, that was a very you know, huge cathedral, by the way. So it's, uh, again, it's a cathedral only. And Anthony Gotti was a very religious person, very, very religious person. He used to feel the God in himself. So that was the situation with him. He used to see things which no one was able to see or think, actually. Now that 30% development is still going on. And people are thinking the scientists and all these architects who are working on that, they are hoping that this will be con con completed uh, in uh, 2024, till 2000, they have the date. So you can think like that. 
it took hardly 40 years to complete 70 percent and 30 percent it has taken more than 100 years so it is very complex there is a whole uh, documentary on at anthony gaudi on netflix i guess you should watch that all the, all of you are uh, you know architect aspirants you should look at these kind of inspiration in your life and to become a brilliant architect tab ja ke kuch hoga just studying architecture whatever you are studying is not a some tiny thing or some kind of career option you are taking for yourself it's a big big you have to invest your whole life and passionately for this thing anyway so just was that uh, uh, documentary of anthony gaudi you will left inspired like anything it was amazing anyway um so this is the development what we are talking about of modern period and uh, the crystal palace was one of the biggest development uh, of early early modern period later on the structure the industrial structure took uh, took over on on all over the world the, the structure uh, the construction and everything and people started getting crazy crazy building with that and some of them like what you see this one um the eiffel tower in france when this architect started designing this thing and having this idea about uh, the gusto i feel uh by who is that coslin what is coslin having this idea people said like, okay you you have turned out to be mad this kind of thing which should not be it's, it's not going to happen it's not going to be complete it's not thing like that or something like that like no whatever the useless it, this thing is but he had the idea he created and now it's a uh, one of the biggest uh development is considered in architectural history so there's so many different kind of thing later on you find in the modern period uh there's so many architect who came in line at primarily if you see jaha hadid no one can think that okay this also this kind of thing also will be possible uh in architecture aspect because that was you know quite absurd idea but later on you know uh, all these people started just re uh, remember all these names these are frank lloyd uh, lloyd uh, right oscar nimmer uh, eric uh, Mandel mandelson all these people are really really important these architects they primarily worked on basically uh, functional buildings and that used to be according to the requirement of the need they used to be very beautifully designed structure also but only for some specific purposes like sports stadium or some kind of uh, theater or museums and things like that but primarily things used to happen according to the need of the functionality now we are talking about uh, the modern period okay so these are the couple of very important examples here what you see uh, considered to be iconic buildings iconic architectural development of the world just remember them okay art deco is one of the style is going to be which is a, one of the big thing which are uh, developed primarily in architecture only a uh, little bit in interior designing and couple of things you will see in painting as well art deco style but it was primarily architecture the chrysler building in new york designed by william von allen that's a art deco style which is one of the very famous building in the world a world trade center you just remember that one sydney opera house and all these things will be important for you okay so just remember that try to recognize these buildings what you see at least recognize the period by looking at uh, these things uh their characteristics and everything you will be able to recognize also so acha one more thing i forgot to tell you about uh, gothic when we were doing the gothic the pointy arches and flying buttresses so you can see this repeated pattern which is supporting the high rise buildings everywhere these are called flying buttresses so this was also one of the biggest idea to develop which helped to create very large size buildings just write that in uh, gothic period 
right so this is what we started there now little bit about islamic arabesque arabesque is uh, one of the uh, uh, terminology which is used for uh, islamic influence designs architectural designs arabesque a r a b e s q u e arabesque decoration islamic mosaic art and uh, uh, tessellation tessellated uh, patterns geometrical patterns that is one big part you see and indo this is by the way, indo islamic there you will find little bit indian influence also so whatever you see in the indian one who might do tomb of himayu or taj mahal or things like that it was a part of medieval period by the way okay it, it happened during medieval period so you can see that and also a uh, little bit part of uh, indian thing especially is has been given separately here so you can have a look of them couple of these important uh, developments from the indians and couple of them there are about the chinese also but anyway yes chill about that chinese are like just a pagoda say need to remember just a pagoda part this they are like by the way this is a the they are tibetan buddhist architecture not like chinese architecture so maybe now it's in under china but remember this a tibetan buddhist anyway so that's all you need to remember for architecture history good luck to you and i think there are some questions also no there are not right okay i'll send you this uh, pdf this pdf to goro sir goro sir will send it to you all right sir is history important there might be couple of uh, pretty good questions and once you understanding history you will understand lots of uh, architectural vocabulary also so yeah it will be important and nice also to know and the information what you have written you have to remember that much information only you don't have to go in deep in this pdf there are so many details are there you may ignore that but whatever you have noted down open the we open this pdf and uh, just go through those parts one more time so that you just remember at least remember figuratively because anything will be coming mostly the chance is that it will come figuratively and you just have to maybe recognize that or something so little bit of thing just remember that okay anything anyone has any question okay enjoy i think your class is over gaurav sir the classes are over right gaurav sir is there thank you right so natak's classes are over and uh, uh, we'll give them mock test papers i'm sending you all the mock test papers okay